Today on The Meltdown, we've all managed to watch some of the Amazon Fallout series, which debuted last night. We debut some blazing hot-off-the-press headlines in a brand new segment here on The Meltdown. And as A24's new movie, Civil War, opens up today in Thursday previews, the newest Luntz's List profiles John's dream team if there happened to be an actual conflict that broke out. There's no easy way to talk about that subject, but we're going to try to right here on The Meltdown today as you're now entering the show. Brought to you by MyBookie, broadcasting live from the Culver's studio. Two big balls in a tiny studio, teaching you and me about everything they know to me sound. A meltdown, it's the meltdown. Welcome in to The Meltdown as we are on the road to 2,000 subscribers. Hoping to hit that number sometime this summer. If you have not yet subscribed, we would love to have your support as you join us on this journey of this little experiment that brings you the latest in movie news, entertainment news, pop culture news, television, music. The whole gambit is right there for your enjoyment daily. 2 o'clock Central, 3 o'clock Eastern. Thank you for making us a part of your day. The other half of the meltdown, that would be Mr. John Lunsford. John, AEW is trying their hardest to bury CM Punk, and it's backfiring royally. Last night, AEW released the security footage of a fight between CM Punk and Jungle Boy Jack Perry that took place eight months ago backstage that led to CM Punk's firing. Do you think their plan of trying to become the good guys in all of this and get all the hype following WrestleMania weekend is one that has been successful. Uh, No, because it seems like they've done a couple of things to try to take shots at WWE post WrestleMania. And this is the one that's like, Oh, wait till you see this footage and not knowing anything about, I don't even know who jumping Jack Perry is or whatever he says his name was jungle boy. Jack Perry, But yeah, (laughs) I like, I like jumping Jack Perry better. Yeah. (laughs) But um, obviously follow CM Punk. He was on my list of favorite wrestlers and everything. And him leaving was what kind of got me not watching quite as much because, of course, Kane had started moving on and everything by that point. So then he goes to AEW. And then even I was like, okay, I'll kind of halfway pay attention to AEW. I paid attention for the first, like, month and then kind of fell out of it. But, like, he was a hot commodity when he went there for a reason. He's a hot commodity back in the WWE for a reason. You know, I'd say coming in, having a lot of the same hype Cody Rhodes had when he came back as well, he just got injured, so he hadn't had much of a storyline lately. But – then it's like, oh, we're going to hurt him. No, CM Punk is one of those people that's larger than life, which is why he left and came back to WWE, which when he left WWE, said basically was like, I will never come back to WWE. Screw everybody there. I hate everything. And what? I was just going to say, you know what the most damning criticism I can say of AEW is? Is that AEW's main competition is WWE. Yes. WWE's main competition is WWE of making sure they get everything right internally. And without AEW being sort of the farm system it has been for WWE, we would not have gotten some of the great storylines we got this past weekend, but we would also not be getting uh, all of these shenanigans we're seeing that's only going to make CM Punk an even bigger draw on their wrestling platform. So it's When CM Punk comes back and is like fully, did he actually fight on Raw? No, this past I, I did, uh, well, outside he's injured. He's still injured. I, knew, I thought he's still injured, but once he fully comes back and has like a legit storyline actually play out and everything, and big money probably gets a belt at some point. Big then, money. I mean, it AEW. Nobody's going to care about this. Everybody's still a CM Punk fan, even though he's not even wrestling. Yes. One thing you're a big fan of, John, that is Way to Wellness. Leslie and her board-certified team taking care of both of us as we continue to work through the plan, seeing the results, and that's what counts for us. Yes, I actually have video of the two of us I was working on today. I forgot to download it here. But go to aplanforme.com. We're, you're going you're gonna to see it soon. You just reminded me. I'm just being transparent with the audience here. Go to aplanforme.com. Learn more about Way to Wellness. Uh, visit Leslie and her whole board-certified team there. Tim and I have gone. We have that video footage of us going yeah. and losing weight. We've done good on the program. Jim Dunaway, obviously, has done it as well. My dad has done it. It's a whole family affair there with Way to Wellness. Go to planforme.com. You can get that consultation. You can figure out your own plan. You can get on that program. I got my snacks right here. I love eating those every day for lunch. 
had it right before we came on the show. And guess what? We're down. We're losing weight, and we're doing good on the plan so far. So go to a planforme.com with our friends at Way to Wellness. There's two things I learned right there. You're dropping weight. And you're dropping the ball all at the same time. That's part of the weight. I created so many cool things today for that and all of our other fine sponsors, and I forgot to download them. So I'm sorry, everybody. Okay. Well, don't apologize to everybody. Apologize to Kelsey. Okay. (laughs) The lovable boy known as Tyler is here. What did you think of the trailer for the new horror movie, Speak No Evil, that stars James McAvoy going back into creepy territory? Uh, it looks really interesting. I like James McAvoy in horror roles since I saw him in Split. He plays this uh, sort of sophisticated sociopath role really well. And uh, plot-wise, this kind of reminds me a little bit of The Gift with Jason Bateman. I loved The Gift. I hated this trailer. I really despise it. Is it really like The Gift? Um, even I like that. Um, no. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't see the parallel fully yet you'll have to make your case for me tyler of of how you're connecting those two i understand the whole kill them with kindness and then actually kill them mentality that you're bringing up with bygones be bygones but you know the twist in this right yeah unless there's another twist we don't know but you know the main twist i know this the twist in it (laughs) some house guests are Invited over they to a actually speak evil vacation. Speak no evil, yeah. No. These house guests are invited over to a vacation. It starts to just level up and level up with animosity and some things that don't sit right, and it starts to feel a little claustrophobic for this family. They decide they need to get away, and James McAvoy just keeps upping up uh, the crazy, dose by dose by dose. And if you know that as an audience, I just feel like how long is it going to take to where you're full-fledged into territory you don't know in this movie? An hour and a half? An hour and 45 minutes? Probably something I like mean, that. And even towards the end, it's probably still pretty predictable. I don't know. Movies like this that give away what is going to be 80% of the experience, at least, just didn't do it for me. But it's all about an American family being invited to spend the weekend at the idyllic country estate of a charming British family that they befriended on vacation, which begins as a dream holiday and soon warps into a snarled psycho- uh, psychological nightmare. It's from Blumhouse. So their goal is to produce this for a few bucks and make a lot more bucks. So good luck. But it comes out in September, and this is one of the horror films that I am least excited about this year. There was a movie called Speed No Evil two years ago. Yeah, that's the trailer I'm watching now. I hate the title. I hate the market. Totally lost. You know what's bad? I suppose it's a sequel to the See No Evil that Kane did. Well, during the trailer, it says, See No Evil. Hear No Evil. Speak No Evil. I just think this thing looks (laughs) stupid as all get out. This makes me, when I watch something like this, this makes me go, you know, Lunsford has some points about horror movies being (laughs) stupid. That's how much this trailer hurt me. I'll take it as my one small Tyler's like, I didn't think it was that bad. I, I watched this and I'm like, well, it wasn't Night Swim. It wasn't Sting, but <laughs> right. this isn't going to be a masterpiece. Tyler's already been hurt by movies that I refuse to watch this year. So who knows? Maybe we'll assign him to go see this movie called Speak No Evil. I think it'll be me. We have Rockstar back with us. Rockstar, when we reach 1,500 subscribers, yes, sir, will you perform Creed's Hire for yeah, us? I'll do that at 1,200. Oh. Ooh. 1200 well yeah. let's get those numbers going then. yeah and do you, you do you want me to do it seriously or like a scott Stapp impression i'd rather you do the impression okay yeah. definitely gotta be no. an impression i don't yeah. want it to be rock star i want it to be okay creed tribute band level creed is making a little bit of a comeback people are yeah. they're forgiving them for some reason no. like it's 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 interesting and i don't say this out of spite i really jam out to hire every single time i hear it. and i just feel like Every time we hit a subscriber mark, you should sing that song because we're asking the audience to take us higher okay. in our subscriber growth. Okay, you didn't want to do Higher Love or anything like that? No, Steve I don't. Winwood? It's really just Creed's Higher every single time, okay. potentially. Okay. But we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Smash that subscribe button. As we've talked about your new Black Jacket uh, job there, would you ever do Scott Stapp for. Uh, uh yeah i I guess was was it uh human clay was that the name of that album? human clay (laughs) uh that's what higher was on track number nine i believe um and then they did my own prison was a great little album it's just he there's a great band but he just won't sing he's bradley cooper uh and he he is (laughs) like it's like you you, your version of bradley cooper is kind of like yeah it's just scott stapp i saw it's like dude you can sing like you got a good band behind you 
Um, Mark Tremonti is an amazing guitarist. He's a huge Metallica fan. You can, he's just, they're a tight band, but you don't have to sing like this. It's like a guy <laughs> trying to do a drunk Eddie Vedder. And I, just, I don't understand, like, uh, why are, are you going to sing? Like, is that how he sings in church? Oh, amazing grace. Oh, yeah. Probably. Is this a Star is Born Again? Is that what <laughs> we're talking about? You got, you got a big nose. <laughs> Uh, I wanted to be I'm looking like forward you. to that black jacket show. Yeah. By the way, Rocky doing uh, Jimmy Buffett. I've been sitting in the office just listening to it. Oh, I, I just heard him in there playing. I am overwhelmed. So, congrats. Thanks. Go ahead, Tim. Sorry, I went off the rails. O.J. Simpson is dead. Okay. Oof. One of the most infamous Americans of all time, dead at the age of 76 after a cancer battle. The former NFL great stood trial for the double murder of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend, Ron Goldman, in the 90s, only to be acquitted in the largest real-life court drama our nation has ever seen. I'm not sure we'll ever see anything quite like it. He passed away Wednesday in Las Vegas, according to his family. Caitlyn Jenner posted some harsh words on social media saying, quote, good riddance, hashtag OJ Simpson. I don't know if you need to put the hashtag OJ Simpson in there. I think people could probably think, connect it. Yeah. But that is what Caitlyn Jenner wrote. Quote tweet or something. Well, there could be she, she could be saying good written yeah. something else. Uh, that's true. I guess wanted so to make it So you got to hashtag there. something. It's a good song. John, could the argument be made that OJ Made in America is the greatest documentary series of all time? Yes, I think it is the greatest documentary series of all time. Oh, is it talking about the Cuba Gooding Jr. thing? <laughs> no, the, uh, <laughs> that, the actual documentary oh. story. that came out at the exact same time oh, as the American Crime Story. The Cuba Gooding Jr. thing was... I have actually not seen the American Crime Story on O.J. Simpson. It's I, fantastic. Only one I've watched Shut Monica up. Lewinsky for some reason, but... <laughs> it's fantastic. No, it, Stop. It, it won a million awards. I mean... Really, really good. Yeah. Yeah, I Sarah wa- Paulson is in it. I Ryan know Murphy's she, very hit or miss, but this is Cooper Gooding Jr. Was, I watched an episode, and I had when they're doing the chase, and like police officers are stopping, like, "Hey, man, that is O.J. Simpson. Let him go." <laughs> like that kind Rockstar, of acting. But you haven't watched it, right? I've watched an episode and a half. Oh, it's it's a tremendously done series. I, I couldn't do Cuba doing O.J. I'm sorry. I love Sarah Paulson. I think she's great, but I did not like Cuba Gooding. Go ahead. I'll tell you the guy that blew me away from that was Ross from Friends. As yeah. the uh, father yeah. of the Kardashians. Kardashians. Robert, Kardashian. Robert Kardashian. Robert Kardashian. Yeah. David Schwimmer. He was fantastic in that role. So I still need to watch it. It was good. But OJ Man Travolta was, was really in good. it. John Travolta was in that series, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yep. It was really, really real, well done. But that documentary series of OJ Made in America, it was released as a five part mini series, and it was also re- released in a theatrical format in some markets. OJ Made in America premiered at the Sundance Film Festival on January 22nd of 2016, was theatrical, theatrically released in New York City and Los Angeles in May 2016. And the reason for that is because you have to release in those markets to be nominated for an Oscar. Do you think it should have been eligible for an Oscar? Well, they changed the rules a year later to make sure that no miniseries documentaries could actually be winners ever again. Cause I mean, it's it won, incredible, but I don't think of it as like winning. It, it won Oscar. Oscars and Emmys. Yeah. Uh, the documentary won the Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature at the 89th Academy Awards, which is why it was released in a feature-style format. It was the longest film in the 30 for 30 catalog and longest film to ever receive an Oscar nomination and win, surpassing War and Peace. The documentary became the last of its type to be nominated and win an Oscar after a new Academy rule barred any multi-part or limited series from being eligible in the documentary categories. You also saw this movie receiving Emmys as well. All, this series alone almost became an EGOT winner, the way it racked yeah. up awards. And yeah, it was much. incredibly well done. Do you think ESPN will end up airing this again on their networks following this announcement of the death? Because there, that would draw numbers from people who have not seen it before. Or do you think that they'll just Should promote I, that it's available to be streamed? I'm glad I watched this on streaming and not on ESPN because you had to hold back a little bit more on ESPN. Maybe they didn't when they aired it on ESPN. I don't know. But I don't see ESPN in its current ESPN state airing this documentary as it was. I don't know. I mean, yes, it's obviously very timely. Mm-hmm. And maybe it was an FX that – the uh, American crime story yes. was on. I can yep. see them maybe go back into that or something, but I don't know if they'll do it or not. We'll see how they buy for the best 30 for 30 they've done. Do you uh, recall what I told you you should say every time you hit a big hand at the poker table on Monday nights? 
The deuce is loose. The deuce is loose. I don't know why I gave you that advice. Because it's the lowest card in the deck versus you being the king, which is second highest. So oh, I, I don't know if that's I really just, why. I, I thought I it was an insult, but I've started doing it just to drive but you crazy. Every time he hits a big hand now, he yells the deuce is loose. And it reminds me of. So does everybody have to have a catchphrase? <laughs> I think so. Yes. Yeah. Only Tim does. I gargle milk. <laughs> he started getting it to yours. other people. Yeah. That could be yours. I'm not invited. Mm. I'm, I'm, I don't take it seriously. OJ Simpson's family posted on social media, quote, on April 10th, our father, Orenthal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. During this time of transition, his family asks that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace, the is, Simpson family. Is this going to be, oh, this, is, this is touchy, are they going to do something televised of a kind of a, a celebration of life or his funeral where they have so-and-so speak? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, so. how do you, what do you... Uh, because no. if you are you chastised for showing up, will we ever get the release of the book "If I Did It" by O.J. Simpson? Because wasn't it a written thing that just never circulated? Now I that he, I feel know. like somebody in the family is going to have the rights to that production. Well, it's going to be Probably. money. If I can get money, I, you don't know. It's, it's sad, but wasn't it weird on every NFL Sunday, really, all the time? You'd be on Twitter, and then all of a sudden, OJ would be on there going, "Hey, what's hey, up, Twitter tw- world? Hey, Twitter world, hey, yours Twitter truly. world, yours truly." It reminds me of Tyler walking out of the theater. Hey, what's up, you guys? <laughs> I mean, it's like it's the same vibe. I'll just be scrolling. Tyler, what the hell you been doing, man? All right, I'm done with these reviews. <laughs> no, 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 Tyler, I'm I done. Love it. If it came for whatever reason, it became like an iconic thing that literally was every NFL uh, Sunday. He kind of recap college and go into whatever the Bills and other NFL teams were doing. It'd be and then. The most awkward transition was when Twitter changed to X, and he didn't know what to say. And that was, hey, Twitter X world. <laughs> he didn't know what to do. I just, I wonder what the future of O.J. Simpson content will be because it was always very jarring. You'd just be enjoying your day, and then O.J. would pop up on your feed, and you'd be kind of like, whoa. And he'd just be talking sports like a normal human being out there, and he was anything but rock star, a normal human being. No, um, that's why I'm just so curious, like, you know, this day was going to come. But he's had a – how long did he stay in – did he go to prison for the memorabilia thing? Yeah, where they he did, yeah. Him? yeah. And how long did he serve in that? Uh, uh, several years. Yeah, I'm going to guess – I'm going to guess eight years. That's going to be my guess. I'm probably wrong. I mean, talking about having a tumultuous 25, 30 years of your life. Do you have the number? I'm trying to find it. Okay. You look for that. But and then there was rumors, like, every other month that O.J. got – killed in prison like he was sentenced to 33 years in prison with eligibility for parole in nine years and he was released to uh, 10 years into it i think no not yet yeah, nine years into it nine yeah. years into it. i was a year off wow i was gonna say it took three years but nine years yep. dang it was wild anybody remember his acting career Norberg. I mean, obviously he was Naked the gun. he was the hertz spokesman right where it was yep. all about yep. making yep. his way through the, airport. through the airport but the naked gun series he was in the towering inferno is yeah, that right i think so but he was set to get a push in all of those different categories and you know obviously the trial of the century then happened but oj simpson a complicated complicated figure and one that always sparked interest in our country passing away at the age of 76 give reggie bush's Heisman back also, uh, just a quick note. I looked it up. If I did, it was released in 2007. It was actually released, though? Yes. Like, to where it, you um, could... It oh, said so originally that... the original release was canceled, but then there were already 400,000 books printed, oh, and there was of, a whole because back the, and forth about because it. Because the Goldman family wanted all the uh, rights to Like, they wanted all the money he made from that, because he's like, we... Anything he does, because he lost the civil yeah. suit, anything he does goes to our family. So I don't know if he was like, but well, then I won't release it. It ended up in people's hands because I feel like I would have known that. I just do. I just feel like I would. There would have been a copy of it somewhere that ended up. I don't know. I guess it just. I guess it went out there. People pulled the excerpts from it. I guess. I'll check Amazon. All right. Yeah. Let after, me know. After uh, after the whole thing with the uh, Goldman family, they uh, changed the cover. To where if the word if and if I did it is very very small and on top of the word I, so it just looks like I did it by O.J. Simpson. Good for them, but I, I I would like to know. I assume this never became a New York Times bestseller. No, but I don't think so. <laughs> the Wikipedia page is complicated on it, so I okay. can't even tell. <laughs> That's fine. We'll we'll get some clarification. But I just I feel like the Goldman family. Available on Amazon in yeah. paperback and digital. Okay. Well, now we know. There you go. I never knew it actually saw sunlight. So thank you, Tyler, for fact-checking that. 
let's talk a little bit about Fallout and the early reaction to it. The eight-episode Prime Video Fallout series came out last night. Fallout is executive produced by Jonathan Nolan and Lisa jo- Joy, the duo behind Westworld. Wal- Walton Goggins is one of the stars of the series and says filming the Fallout series was, quote, an incredible experience, but exhausting. At the end of every day, it was blanking hot. Prime Video will submit Fallout in 27 Emmy categories, including Walton Goggins and Ella Purnell as lead actor candidates. They'll be putting a, a marketing campaign behind them. John, how much of Fallout have you seen so far? Two episodes. First two episodes. Tyler, how much of Fallout have you seen so far? Uh, first episode. Rockstar, you do not plan to watch this. Is that correct? I play the game to that. Are the Merc Lurks in it? It's very the Meyer faithful. Lurks, Meyer I haven't Lurks. Seen Those things yet. were scary. It's so very yeah. faithful to the game so far. So I, I enjoyed the game, uh, but no, I had no idea it dropped. I will give it a shot, yeah. I have watched now five episodes of oh, Fallout. Wow. Been going through it. I liked episode one. I didn't love episode one. I liked it. I loved episode two. I thought episode two was way better. I was the opposite. I loved episode one and thought episode two was pretty good. But, this is, us, show. This but not is, quite as good. This is how this is how we Still approach it. But not, not quite as good. I thought episode two was, was way better. John, you have a certain violence threshold with entertainment you consume. We've alluded to that a few times. We haven't gotten into the full discussion because it would take all episode to understand. I, wherever you're going, let me tell you this one quote. Okay. From my wife as okay. we're watching it. There's one movie that is coming out named Maxine that my wife is obsessed with that trilogy. X, Pearl, Maxine. I've seen Pearl, got its moments, but overall not super violent. X, I think, is super violent. Maxine, I watched the trailer and was like, nope, you can tell me all about it. 15 minutes into the show. You're going to see Maxine with me. There's no way anything I take you to see is going to be as bad as this is. Agreed. She's I was, right. I was though. like, you're probably right, but I have an emotional connection to this as opposed to any of this other stuff, so I'll, I'll put up with it. But uh, it was forget, very violent. Forget Fallout. Westworld season one is your favorite. I know, I know, I know. It's very violent. Series too. of television ever, and it is as violent as yeah, anything. Ed I've Harris ever seen. like scalp a guy. Yes, to get a map to get the maze. You, you just, yeah. <laughs> you, I support your parameters, whatever they are, but they constantly Look, shift to make I've arguments. Admitted, for, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any sense. Even I will admit it doesn't make sense. It's very violent, but it, I thought it was very good. It took me years to finally get you to watch Halloween from the 70s, which is in not scope of violence, <laughs> <laughs> not violence, not violent horror, it's just even... Nice. It's really not at all. I'm lost for words because I can't understand your threshold of what you will consume and what you won't consume, but Fallout seems to be something you're working your way through. I have no doubt that by the end of the weekend, we'll be through the entire series, all three of us. That's my plan. And I think Monday we will be recording a Fallout series review full of spoilers for those that are on the journey. And I knew nothing about the source material going in, minus what I saw from the trailer, which, by the way, if you want to know if this is a series that's right for you, you can check out our Fallout trailer reaction here on the Meltdown channel. Not hard to find there under the trailer reaction tab. But I really am fascinated by the material, by the story, by the setting, by the world building that's being done, by the characters that are being developed. And I look forward to talking about this after we've all caught up and we've all seen the same amount of episodes, which by Monday will be eight, I'm pretty confident of. My experience with the game is very much what you see in most of what at least I've seen so far in the first two episodes, and they may go back to this, but the first 10 to 15 minutes I loved, and I want a whole show strictly based off the first 10, 15 minutes before the apocalypse happens. I think that would be fascinating to see. They may go back there or not, but... That was fascinating that I feel like isn't super involved in the game because your whole point is you're in the wasteland and everything. Do you think this will be – I'm looking at the uh, YouTube trailer. How many views do you think there? the official trailer that dropped one month ago? I'm going to say just over a million. Oh, I'm going to say way more than that. I'm going to go 13 million. I'll go 20. 24 million oh, people have watched I, I this I thought trailer. you were trying to make it like really low. No, I mean, it's just like, because no. it was a huge popular video game, but I'm saying, is it going to be, because the majority of the people that are watching this, I'm guessing, are the video yeah. game fans. Uh, that's just all they got, uh, Ben from Lost in it. Go ahead. They do. <laughs> and yes. I love it, Ben. You, you, He's always a creep. <laughs> always. Incredible in the series. Uh, that's all I'll say. And I just, 
I, I think there are some real highs here, and I look forward to talking about it in all of its spoiler glory on Monday. I think I'll be done with the series by tomorrow when we hit the airwaves, but wow. I'm going to hold off episodes? my judgment. Eight, eight okay. episodes. Okay. They vary in length. Some are like 40 minutes. Some are an hour and 10. That, that was are... the weirdest thing. I was scrolling through them, and it was like hour 15, hour 5, 50 minutes, 40 minutes, 45 minutes. You know what's great about that? It jumps around. It's because it is developed for Amazon. They don't have to worry about hitting those thresholds. That's what like Stranger Things did. I mean, Stranger Things, had, their last episode was literally yeah. two and a half hours long. It's like a whole movie in itself, but it was just episode nine. You think West, the next season of Westworld could come back on Amazon Prime, or you think they only care about developing new content? I think uh, Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy have told you know Warner, hey, kiss our butt, and... If Amazon's going to pay them the money, I think Amazon should do what they can to get Westworld so they can come back and do just an absolute killer. Hey, Amazon's got money. They spent, what, a billion dollars just for the rights to do Rings of Power? I mean, they can bring Westworld back and do a season if they really they want to. put some to. serious money behind this show, too. And this one, it too, yeah. It looks exactly like the game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one definitely has spent its money on the screen, which is good for all of us. Speaking of falling out, if you're worried about that happening with your teeth, Gosh. visit my friends at <laughs> Alabama Dental Associates. You've heard me rave about the team located on Grants Mill Road. Let's hear what some others are saying. Right there you see Dr. Jeff and Dr. Brian. They run a great practice there located on Grants Mill Road. They've got the latest in dental care technology, so you can always make sure that you are up to date, not only with the services in which you're receiving, but with all of those cleanings that you have scheduled. Tabitha wrote, Dr. Newdom is the best. He saved me during two dental emergencies, so I switched to him for all of my dental care after being with someone else for 15 years. Today, he fixed a hideous tooth and gave me a reason to smile big. So thankful to him and all of the amazing ladies in the office. Tabitha's a happy patient. I'm a happy patient. We have Rosa who says, For many years, I have been a patient here. Always great. Yesterday, my heart smiled with the gentle and the utmost care and compassion from Assistant Allie and from Dr. Brian. They made my miracle happen. I will forever be thankful. There's nothing more comforting than walking in, getting the exact service you need, being taken care of to where your comfort is the number one priority, and being able to walk out with a giant smile like you're hearing from all of these happy patients, including myself. Make sure you reach out to the team at Alabama Dental. For all of your dental care needs at 205-956-8977. That's 956-8977 or visit alabamadental.com. They look forward to seeing you. And here's all I'll say about fallout when it comes to reminding me about Alabama Dental. There is a shot of a dental practice or at least a dental storefront that is very apparent in the fallout series and will make both John and make Tyler laugh when they eventually get to it. I have no doubt about that. Let's now get to a brand new segment that I have informed pretty much no one about here on the show, so it should be a lot of fun. Okay. Let's fire off some blazing, hot-off-the-press headlines here on The Meltdown. Yes, thank you. Roar, roaring crowd there. What? Here's how what this is going to work. I'm going to give you a headline. Okay. And you are going to tell me whether this is a mild reaction you have, a medium reaction you have, or an enfuego reaction that you have. That's Spanish for on fire. Yes. I didn't think of the fire Scott uses when it came to uh, yeah. the Alabama coaching search. Now, John, if I remember correctly, you mix up mild and medium a couple of times, don't you? That's something that, yes. that tricks you up a little bit. Yes. Are you prepared enough to go into this segment to know mild is the lowest and medium is the mediumist? Nope. Okay, okay. Well, just remember that. Mild, medium, in fuego. You can even go reheated medium in fuego if you need to. <laughs> Whatever you need to do, I want to make sure this works. Here we go. Like a lukewarm cake? <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Let's go cold. I, don't, I don't handle hot stuff well, by the way. I was eating some buffalo sauce here in the studio yesterday and was dying. Hate and that John, smell. did he offer to get up and get me a bottle of water? He absolutely did not. He's he got a couple of buffalo sauces pain. in there. Be honest, John. Watching me eat hot stuff brings you joy. A little bit. It's painful. It's so painful. But I love it. Especially knowing I was going into trivia yesterday where I was going to get screwed. So I was like, yeah, burn. There's one restaurant in town where I went and I ate something that was so spicy that the waitress was feeling bad for me because I'm, I'm crying 
literally crying and I'm guzzling. Sir, this, maybe this restaurant isn't guzzling for you. Drink, and they're like, you know what would help is some sour cream. Would you like for me to bring you some? And I was like, that'd be great. And they charged me for the sour cream. And of I course, thought that, that was like, well, it was their idea though. Like, well, I didn't you, say. Sir, would you like another beer? We're you suggested you I'd do the special. So no, why do I have to pay for she that? She said, <laughs> let me bring you some sour cream. That'll help. I go, fine. That's that's great. Thank you so much. Oh, lasagna is so great. Why did you charge I me get for the it? ticket, you know, $17 for a little thing of. It wasn't seventeen dollars. Say my part. God! I'm trying to get you guys on my side, <laughs> yeah. but I'm like, that's just cream. It's your idea, you know. <laughs> Somebody offers you a band aid, and then they like, sour. my Venmo is blah blah. Yeah, that's not very kind. I'm yeah, bleeding if, out here, lady. If, if, but if I was at the hospital, they would charge me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sir, would you like us to do the life saving, <laughs> yeah. life saving procedure? Is it going to cost me? Yes, oh, I don't know. Unless you're in Canada, I mean, Canada. That's true. That's a whole different ball yeah. game there. Okay. First, blazing hot off the press headline. This segment's going well. I can tell. It's going to be a hit. The night managers returning for two brand new seasons from the BBC and prime video with Tom Hiddleston reprising his role as Jonathan Pine. This news comes eight years after its initial run. It's a two season order from the BBC and Amazon's prime video streaming platform. We talk about prime with fallout. They now want to bring back the night manager. Is this a series John that you've ever watched? Are you mild medium or in fuego on this news headline? I have never heard of the night manager before. Hugh so Laurie in that very mild, but looking at the cast, Tom Hiddleston, Hugh Laurie and yeah. Olivia Coleman, who I like as well. So, uh, mild, but you know, now that I know what the show is just with the cast, I don't know anything about it, but I'll watch it. Tyler mild, medium or in fuego. Uh, I have also never heard of the night manager. So I'm going to go below mild and go with a nice verde sauce. Ooh. <laughs> Maybe that's what I need to stick to at the restaurants. That that won't light me up? Uh, no, no. Uh, you should be good with that one. Okay. I mean, you could make it spicy if you wanted to, but in general, no. Rockstar? I've heard of it. I think maybe Lance watched it. Uh, he said it was pretty good. I, I'm mild. I have like I, I know. Okay. I'm trying to think of where, where did the original. BBC was original. Yeah. But I thought streaming-wise it wasn't on BBC. It came on some. I thought it was like FX or something maybe. I don't know. But I remember uh, I had no interest in it then, and I'm not. United I'm States mild. It was on AMC. Yes, AMC. So nobody's interested. Well, it's coming back. <clears throat> Next blazing hot headline. Sorry, blazing hot off the press headline. Brand new segment. Michael, an upcoming biopic about Michael Jackson, debuted a dazzling first look at CinemaCon this week during Lionsgate's presentation to theater owners. The sweeping footage starts as hysterical fans scream along to Jackson as he owns the stage, performing hits like Man in the Mirror and Thriller. Rockstar, we've talked about this biopic that's in the works before. Much like O.J. Simpson, Michael Jackson, a very controversial figure in society, reaching the highest highs, the lowest lows. Are you mild, medium, or in fuego on the news of this trailer being awesome? Uh, I am, I'll do medium. Uh, this, this is such a controversial, because it's, it, it, his family's involved, and they say they're going to explore everything, they're going to reveal... Oh, they're not going to edit. So uh, I'm medium just to see what the uh, what they're going to do with this thing. Same here. Um, you guys know I like my biopics, but uh, I'm kind of medium on this. Like you feel never... icky buying a ticket. Yeah, I do. And I've also never been the biggest Michael Jackson fan. I always preferred Prince. You icky buying a ticket. Instead of a ticket, it's an icket. Yeah, like it's kind of like, Ugh. did you say Michael? Mm. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Mm-hmm. How old are you, sir? This is, um, hey, this is why you go to the movies in a trench coat with the app. Because then you don't have to make direct contact with anybody. Why do I have to have... Okay. No, trench are you coat. not replaying the John Travolta, Michael, that I can go see here instead? Isn't that, that the one he had, where he plays like an angel? An angel yeah. He had a mullet too, didn't he? Um, uh, I thought he just had long hair. I don't know. That was his know. blue jean phase yeah. where he wore <laughs> yeah. like really prominent dad jeans. That's phenomenon. <laughs> yes. Domestic disturbance. Yeah. yeah, those movies. Primary colors. Let's keep going. Um, face off, Greece. No, face off is face off is like right before that. I think like oh, no. I don't know. I'm trying to think about what else would be in there. But was it Battleship Battle, Earth or Battlefield, Battlefield Earth? Earth? Battlefield. He Battlefield turned down Earth. Forrest Gump to do that film. <laughs> John, we well, all are mild on this. I am also or medium on this. I'm also medium. I already messed it up. I'm medium. <laughs> I got to come up with better parameters because the mild and medium it it really trips John up. And uh, mild, medium, or regular on this. <laughs> okay. Speaking of musical biopics, Bob Marley, One Love, will release on Paramount Plus tomorrow in the U.S. and Canada. Tyler, I'm starting with you. You've actually seen this movie. Are you mild, medium, or in fuego on this development? Uh, I guess mild because I don't have Paramount Plus. But you've seen the movie, right? Oh, It's about about recommending it if you really liked it. 
Oh, I thought you were asking for my reaction to it going to Paramount Plus. Technically, uh, yes. <laughs> but you saw the movie already. It's going great. All right. Uh, oh. Medium. It's a so- it's a solid <laughs> biopic, but uh, it's not one of the greats. I gave it a three or three and a half stars, though. It's not bad. No. I'm growing mild on this segment. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I was going to say, can we rate the segment? I'm going mild on this one, too. Uh, I don't I don't care. I'm mild. I don't care. I'll probably watch it at some point. Love Bob Marley, care. but I don't care about the movie. Okay, we'll keep firing these off. Speaking of musicians, Taylor Swift's songs are back on TikTok. Fuego. And Fuego. After a more than two... Just interrupt me from now on. It's better when you interrupt. Verde sauce. <laughs> Taylor Swift's songs are back on TikTok after a more than two-month hiatus... As of this morning, multiple Swift songs, including You Belong With Me, Lover, Cardigan, Mirror Ball, Fearless, Ooh. Cruel Summer, Cardigan, which I've already mentioned. <laughs> Wait, style. Cardigan on there? <laughs> I'm getting medium on it. <laughs> Is it over now? The Man and Me were Is all this available. segment over now? <laughs> <laughs> they were all available on the TikTok app for users to incorporate into their videos. The, 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 <laughs> I'm on a don't care on that one. The, the man and me. Other, uh, I can't say, make that joke. Um, I'm in Fuego, whatever it is. Taylor Swift, I'm in Fuego. You got one. Oh, Tyler didn't answer. Come on, Tyler. Uh, Verde sauce. Verde. He said Verde. Yeah. No. Yeah, I don't have TikTok, so I couldn't care less. Do you use music in your TikToks, John? Do you actually incorporate? I only do because that gets it viewed more. Oh. Like, if you're using trending, let's say Taylor Swift, you know, her new album comes out next week. You start using She's that music. another album come up. The does Tortured she, Poets department, sleep? come on. Oh, yeah. But does she sleep? Uh, no. God. But, uh, like, if you use that song, then it's like, oh, it's, you know, a trending song. So you will you can hit the music and view other videos that use that song. So it gets it viewed more. So, yes. Five Nights at Freddy's is officially getting a sequel after the original. Shock the box office with a blockbuster gross of $291 million worldwide. In Fuego. Are you really in Fuego on yeah. this? Oh, I really like the first one. Also, a good video game adaptation. While we're currently getting killer video game adaptations, ah, killer, get it? It's a horror movie. Okay, <laughs> what's the sequel called? All right. Six Nights at Freddy's. Well, that's I, just one I more night. <laughs> Additional Nights at Freddy's. I don't know what it's called. Well, you don't sound like you're very uh, in fuego. I haven't seen the first one. I haven't seen the first Neither one. Neither have I. I it's did good. love show. I love Showbiz back in the day, but I wouldn't have watched it back as a kid. So it's kind of like it's. Uh, so I'll go slightly medium. Okay. Medium rare. Tyler, you're a big fan of the property. Uh, medium. I still haven't seen the first movie, but I do like the games a lot. How has in Lunsford Fuego. been the only person to see a horror movie in this room? That doesn't make any sense. Statistically, well, that should never happen. Five Nights at Freddy's. I know, but it should never. Hey, it should guess never guess how many Five Nights at Freddy's I've ever bought. Zero. I did go see the movie, though. Speaking of Jason Blum. He's reviving the Blair Witch Project for Lionsgate. The Blair Witch Project coming wow. back as a property. Mild for rock star. Sour cream they make you pay for. Sour cream they make you pay for for John Lundsberg. Is it found footage? I am it done. better be. It's got to be. I'm over right? it. No, I have no interest. Done. In Fuego, but in the opposite direction. I do not want this movie to exist. It's sour cream they make you pay for. That's, I tried to go as low as I could with this segment. Well, I guess that it's sour cream you got to pay for. It. Gutter water, I believe, is the lowest you can go. <laughs> All right. There we go. The Bridgerton Season 3 trailers officially dropped. Ooh. Colin and Penelope's Bridgerton romance simmers into passion in the new season three trailer that Sour released cream today. they make you pay for. Still nobody. I mean, this is what I watched the first episode of the first season. My wife was all about it. I was like, eh. Uh, do portal it. at water on this one. Should have saved this one for Laurel. Maybe she would have been more excited. Well, she'd be in Fuego. The final If trailer dropped today. It's in theaters on May 17th. Just It doesn't have to be just about the trailer. It can be just about the movie If. Where Medium. are you on this? Medium. Medium for John? Uh... Medium to in fuego. I'm actually excited for this movie. I think it'll be a really good time. Okay. Uh, I saw actually saw the trailer because it's on some of the kids' TV shows that we uh, watch with my son. So, uh, what did it say? Who thinks of an invisible if? Is that one of the one of the quotes? For is it Ryan Reynolds? Uh, mild. Mild. I'm very mild on this. Looking forward to this way more than I did Imaginary, even though Imaginary wasn't awful, but. I believe in Ryan Reynolds and John Krasinski just enough to think there's going to be enough adult humor in this, despite the fact that it works for kids, too, that it'll be decent enough. I've yet to see anything that excites me about this. I'm sure it'll be lovely. They keep rehashing the same jokes in the trailer, which tells me that they're saving something for the movie. So that makes me feel a little bit more interested, but I have not gotten behind this yet. Also, I don't think we're at the point yet where we can say 
from the imagination of yeah that was bad because he's only done uh, what is it place. what was the, the term ima- they imaginative used? mind of john krasinski or yeah. something like that yeah i don't know you got to have something else first before that i feel like that, Quiet Place is good but you, you have to have multiple i think yeah like you're it's almost <laughs> like he's putting him in dr seuss category and multiple winners is not a quiet place one and two like that Paramount Pictures will back the new Damien Chazelle feature film. We learned that this week at CinemaCon. The collaboration reunites the director with the studio behind his most recent movie. That was 2022's Babylon, which was... Sour cream you drugged through the street. (laughs) Street water sour cream. Oof. Despite its grand ambitions and starry cast of Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie, Babylon became an epic box office disaster. So much so that my favorite film of all time is directed by Damien Chazelle, and I didn't even go see this thing. It ended up with just $63 million worldwide against an $80 million production budget, and that is not including the marketing campaign and the split that they had to give away a lot of those profits back to the theaters themselves. So, Damien Chazelle, I'm in fuego still about Damien Chazelle. But I'm curious if you feel the same way, John. Uh, Whiplash was great. Yes. La La Land was greater. Yes. First Man was meh. Yes. Babylon was pure hot garbage. So he is going downhill quickly since La La Land. He had a three-movie span of Whiplash, Riding 10 Cloverfield Lane, and La La Land. That, that's a pretty good you know uh, trilogy of movies there. And then just kind of fell off. Fell off the wagon, but still hanging on with First Man, and then completely fell off and got trampled by all the horses with Babylon. So Let me try to convince Tyler and Rockstar to be in fuego about this. That is because not only is he a visionary filmmaker, uh-huh. but this movie has to be good, or else he is done. <laughs> so he's got to put it all out there. I mean, yes. Have you seen Whiplash? Whiplash Rockstar? was fantastic. I loved it. Did not see La La Land. Uh, had no interest in Babylon. It's, I'm like the opposite. If it's an all-star cast, if it's like... Seven A-listers that makes me deterred to see the movie. I don't know why. Like I, he tried too hard with Babylon to do that. Yeah, like they. Should, I, I I don't want seven A-listers in a film. So Whiplash was amazing. I watched it again about a couple months ago. Uh, don't like musicals. Didn't care about La La Land. So no, you, you're not giving me in fuego. I'm sorry. Uh, What's his name? David David Adushi. What was his name? David Desmalchian. Yes, Des, this let's mount David. Let's mount them. That has nothing to do with these movies? I don't know what he has to do with <laughs> anything other than maybe I was excited about it and Rockstar's still uh, not excited about it. Okay. So, no. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, this is uh, expired sour cream that you still have to pay for. I like Whiplash, but I didn't like La La Land. <laughs> to be fair, I'm not that low on him, personally. Just Babylon was garbage. It's a good David Gray song. Sylvester Stallone's been accused of creating a toxic, envi- a toxic environment for background actors on the Atlanta set of Tulsa King. Him being canceled, how much stock do you buy into it after these allegations of being a horrible monster on set? I've already made my opinion clear that I wasn't a giant Rocky fan and that, you know, a lot of the stuff that he has done in his career I haven't really cared about. However, I watched probably the first two-thirds of Tulsa King and then for whatever reason I quit watching, but it was actually really, really good. But now seeing this, it's like, okay, well, I don't really care to go back and watch it because it seems like it's not going to have a great ending to the show if everything ends up falling apart off, you know, off camera. But I, I don't know what he did. This happened has happened to a million actors that have rebounded perfectly fine. I'm sure Sylvester Sloan still be casting things. I don't know. Expendables. Do you think I don't care that much honestly about Do you think in Tulsa Tulsa King, whatever it is, like you're gonna people are gonna be looking for the extras that for fat guy with a cane? No, um, no. Oh. Tyler? Uh haven't seen Tulsa King. I love the Rocky movies. Um allegedly an extra was yelled at by Sylvester Stallone or something along those lines. I mean, Christian Bale has done that too, and we still love every time. Oh, he comes good out of the movie. for you! So is Tom Cruise. And, uh, yeah, I just really don't care. I just get tired of seeing all the posts of so and so was mean to me on set. Also, did his, he? It's boring. He has a Paramount Plus show as well with a, a documentary series like a yeah, Living but, with the Stallones. Yeah. Is that doing anything with his wife and like model daughters? I just assume it's like the Osbournes, but. With his family instead. I'm like, he's on Paramount. Like, are they ceasing production? Like, what is you're saying? He's canceled. Like, what? what is, I know, there's I saw the article. There's an attempt to cancel okay. him. So well, still I don't filming. think it will be there's successful. There's an attempt to cancel everything. So. so there's some tweets? Or, like, has anything happened in real life yet? People have come forward. Right. Yeah, he's done I think, stuff. I think there's both. I think people have tweeted about their experience that they had firsthand. Okay. But will anything happen to Sylvester Stallone? As long as he's generating money for whatever studios he's yeah, working for. I think he's good, but we'll see. 
In Mel Gibson's new thriller, Flight Risk, which debuted a trailer at CinemaCon, has not come out yet, Mark Wahlberg plays a balding, psychotic mob hitman. Does this, just hearing what you've heard about the movie Flight Risk, directed... Sour Cream in the Street. ...by Mel Gibson, is this something you want to see? No. Mild because it's the lowest, but... Yeah. I, I wasn't medium until you said Mark Wahlberg. I don't know. I don't know why. Like I don't hate the guy. I just don't. I, I departed. I'm trying to think of a, a Wahlberg film that I enjoy. Fear. You love fear. Yeah, yeah, but that's like a cheesy movie. Like I'm talking like a, like an oh. acting movie. Like Transformers. Wow. Transform. Guys, it's a Transformer. <laughs> it's a Transformer. That's pretty good. It's pretty. That's it's departed. Bad, like would well, name me a good role. Okay, I'm trying to think of a Mark I don't hate either one of them, love. but like besides the happy, I can't, I can't think of anything recently. Like, yeah. oh, I gotta go see that. Mel that Gibson one where he was Mark the gambling, did, uh, the gambler. Did that do anything? Where he was the uh, the no, priest, no. Father Stu. Did that do anything? Father Stu didn't do anything. No. So I was just saying, like, uh, and Wahlberg just makes a ton of money, but I just don't see him as a. He's not like a. Uh, if Wahlberg's in it, I'm seeing it. Tyler, uh, can you repeat the uh, premise of the movie again? Yes, it's called Flight Risk, where Mark Wahlberg plays a balding, psychotic mob hitman. And it's directed I'm by Mel Gibson. I think, I think just, Mel Gibson may be in it as well. I just like just how they for had the to, novelty. I like how they had to put balding in the description of him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a very important okay. character trait, I guess. Okay. Lionsgate unveiled a new trailer at CinemaCon for John Wick spinoff Ballerina, starring Ana de Armas in it. In Fuego. De Armas' assassin makes short work of several assailants, torching a truck with a flamethrower, leaping for moving vehicles, and engaging in brutal hand-to-hand combat in a burning building. Tyler, you're in Fuego. Tell us why. Uh, I love the John Wick universe, and I'm excited to see how they build that out and take some other angles on it because there's so much lore that just isn't revealed to you in the movies. John? I'm all in on the John Wick universe now. Came in late, but it's like, yeah, okay, I I get it. And while she's in a lot of my (laughs) uh, higher-tier movies, including some of my favorite movies, I just... Cannot get behind Anna de Armas for some reason. She's in Blade Runner 2049, which is one of my favorite movies of all time. We talked about how much we love War Dogs in our Joker mm-hmm. preview, but she just does not do it for me. And so her being the lead takes me out of it to where I'm mild. Rockstar? But I'll probably still see it. Uh, I've seen the first John Wick. I really enjoyed it. I haven't seen the other six. Also, <laughs> I haven't seen the hotel thing. Is that any good? Mel, I haven't Mel Gibson. I haven't watched that yet either. Mel Gibson's in that. Like I, uh, No buzz on that show. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, and this is the John Wick universe. It seems like it's a big part since it's the second first thing since John Wick. But no, I don't. I'm, uh, I would say I'm. This will have John Wick medium. in it. The Continental did not have John Wick in it. So. Oh. By the way, Richard wants to know: Did you like the movie The Other Guys, Rockstar? I haven't seen it. Okay. I it's know pretty, it's, it's pretty good. I've seen clips. I've seen on Twitter or all that stuff that they do bloopers I, with a uh, only because Will Ferrell and Mark Mark Wahlberg can't stop laughing at him. I remember going to see The Other Guys, and there were. A group of teenagers up at the top of the theater, and I was sitting towards the bottom of the theater, and I was getting pelted with quarters during the movie. And I kept looking. <laughs> Don't take their side. I mean, they, they were throwing quarters at a giant. They were throwing quarters at me. I, you could have walked out rich. Yeah. Well, I, I picked up every quarter, and I was like, joke's on you. I've got seven seventy five in my pocket because it was a lot of quarters. <laughs> so eventually in the theater, I got up to expose – my height yeah. and size All these and <laughs> looming stature to yeah. show them, like, the gig's up. I know this is happening to me because I just kept getting pelted with, with quarters. And I went up there, and there were two sets of teenagers. And one of the teenager groups was like, it's not us, man, it's them. And I was Ooh, like, that's exactly, smelt it, dealt it. that's exactly what the group that's doing this to me would do. Mm-hmm. So I was like, Psh, you're not going to trick me. So I just intimidated them physically okay nothing illegal and i'm walking out the theater with him and then the other group hits me with another bag of quarters and runs <laughs> off mm. i picked the wrong group of teenagers mm. and they i told still you feel the truth oh i got in my car and i chased them down the highway that's a smart move and then i thought to myself no i got to be the bigger man here both literally you and were, figuratively uh-huh. So did you like the other guys? I didn't. Okay. <laughs> it's a horrible, a, no. horrible theater. Dude, you're a quarter pounder. That's it's a, a it's weird a, theater thing. It's a good movie, happen. though. It's a good movie. Attorneys for Rust Armor or Hannah, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed are asking that she be sentenced to probation. Gutierrez-Reed is due to be sentenced on Monday on a charge of involuntary manslaughter. She faces a maximum of 18 months in prison. John, where do you stand? Mild, medium, or in fuego? 
on Hannah Gutierrez Reed simply receiving probation? <sighs> that whole thing is an interesting situation. Reading into it more and seeing her family as armorers and that what they're considered armorers. Yes. Um, like it seems like it's not the first time. So just receiving probation seems like not quite enough because it seems like not that there were guns used to kill people necessarily, but that there were a lot of mistakes to where, Hey, this is a, something that should have been nipped in the bud beforehand. So maybe a little more than that. So I'm, I'm mild on only getting that Tyler. Uh, in fuego, this is ridiculous. You, how do you let, I, did I, your look tells me I misunderstood the game again. Probably so. That's fine. It's a complicated <laughs> game. My question is, where are you on the feeling that you have about her only receiving probation potentially on Monday? She should have received so much more. Okay. Yeah. There we go. You can't bring live ammo. Tom and I were I'm making this game this, as yeah. confusing as possible. <laughs> How good of a guy was OJ Simpson in Fuego? Uh, I want to see him burning. Anyway, I'm sorry. That was I want to pass to John for two points. Yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> I'll Ariana, take uh, question 476, No, I didn't please. get my opinion. When the hell please is this do. Rust movie coming out? And is it going to be, are people going to see it just because I want to see this one, the, the Crow thing, where I want to see that scene, where, I, where that scene was supposed to be? I don't think anybody is going to want to. Uh, I don't know I, if I'll it'll take that up. wrong. If it's on streaming, people will watch it out of morbid curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. But it's no been, one's going to the theater When did this happen? It? 2021? 20, it seemed like it happened during yeah. the pandemic. It yeah. would have been. T- I feel like it happened. I mean, it's tail forever ago. ago. A couple years ago. Yeah. 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 And she's ready for this story to be over. The Rust Armors GoFundMe was shut down. It was set up by her dad that started the GoFundMe to raise money for legal costs ahead of his daughter's scheduled sentencing for her role in the shooting death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Ariana Grande is featured in, in a new Wicked trailer that supposedly dazzled CinemaCon. Grande said. We both felt such a tremendous responsibility to honor these women, pour our hearts, our souls, our tears, so many different pairs of lashes. They worked through a lot of different pairs of lashes, I guess, because they (laughs) cried so much in trying to make these roles really pop while singing popular. Mm. Was that bad? Yeah. Give me half credit, right? I'll give you half credit. Uh, And Fuego is still for Wicked. The first show didn't look great, but I love Wicked in general. Um, and I think Ariana Grande is one of the best singers out there, just pure singers, even though her music doesn't typically follow that. So I'm still in fuego about it. I know you guys don't want to go see nope. Wicked, right? Nope. nope. Okay, well, let's just move on. Melrose Place is back. Nope. The primetime soap <laughs> opera is getting a new reboot with Sour original cream. stars Heather Locklear, Laura Layton, and Daphne Zuniga all reprising their roles. Sour cream. Daphne Zuniga was Princess Vespa in Spaceballs. I get that. <laughs> what is Melrose Place? Oh, <laughs> Well, I'm with Tyler. I've never seen an episode. I haven't either, but at least I know what it yeah. is. <laughs> I like, is this Heather Locklear at 60? Like, I, I don't understand what's the appeal to this. Like, I... <sighs> That's a perfect response, Tyler. All right, moving on. Christopher Nolan and his brother Jonathan did not agree at all on the villain for The Dark Knight Rises at first. Pittsburgh. Jonathan Nolan said, quote, oh, I was unsure... <laughs> did you make a, a sound effect, John? Oh, Pittsburgh. Is that, is that Ryan Brown? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> oh, 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 Pittsburgh. Mm, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Pittsburgh. Okay. I did not know about this, or else I would not have brought this story up. <laughs> Are you in fuego about it, or what? <laughs> or is it more sour cream? I'm not going to play it again. I would love to talk. Here we go. Whew. Christopher Nolan and his brother Jonathan Nolan did not agree on the villain for The Dark Knight Rises at first. Jonathan Nolan said, I was unsure about Bane at the story stage. I started to play with the idea of the Riddler and what could be done with that character, the Riddler being my favorite Batman villain of all time. But it did feel like close enough to the space of what we had done with Heath Ledger, and you really needed to change direction. And they decided that Bane would give them a change of direction. I agree. Tom Hardy's Bane. Are you mild, medium, or... Are you mild, <laughs> medium, or in fuego about it? The performance that we saw in The Dark Knight Rises. In fuego. It's my favorite of the three. You know that. I'm all about Bane. So. Oh, Pittsburgh. Yes. Great. One of the greatest scenes in movies, too, when the uh, field explodes. Tyler, talk. Uh, I'm medium on uh, Bane from Dark Knight Rises. Never been one of my favorite Batman villains, but uh, 
pretty good performance and also gives us that uh, legendary Ryan Brown clip. <laughs> and he goes out bad, but I'm not. That's not his. That's not, it's not Tom Hardy's fault. Uh, I, I'm medium. I thought he did well. It's just the it's like Nolan made it a point to didn't they have to recut some stuff because he was totally. You could not understand him at all in the original part. Like they had to redub a yeah. lot. Uh, but of that, his, that's just yeah. the, just it, it is something worth like with Tom Hardy. He mumbles anyway. Every movie he's in, uh, The Revenant. Oh my! Which I think still he had a better performance than uh, Leo. I will take that. Uh, but medium. I thought The Dark Knight Rises was a great film. A little bigger, darling. That's all I think every time I think yeah. of Tom Hardy from Inception. Last one here. Margot Robbie's company, Lucky Chap, and her partners, Tom Ackerley and Josie McNamara, are producing a live-action feature film based on the game Monopoly. Hell yeah. Hasbro Entertainment, the backers of Monopoly, will also produce. We have the Birmingham edition of Monopoly here in the studio, featured every single day. Heck yeah. Where are you, mild, medium, or in fuego, on the Monopoly movie starring Margot Robbie? You want to hear something crazy? Never in my life. Have I played a game of Monopoly? Oh my goodness! What? Never in my we life. gotta put break out the Birmingham edition. How, oh, we, we were I to feel start, like we have to hey, live we, stream it and everything. If we were to start playing right now on this episode, how long would it take to get through the entirety of the game? Monday. You think we'll be done by Monday? That's probably shortchanging it a little bit. I have bit. to leave. I, I can't. I can't continue. Okay. But I, I. It depends I, on the uh, house rules. Never played a game yeah. of Monopoly in my life. Lunsford? I'm. Uh, I'm medium on this only because she's starring in it, but should the main character be the Monopoly man? So like many that, money, many money bags, rich bags, uncle money bags. Penny bags. Yeah, there you go. I don't so, think that his look would draw as many audience members. Wilford I'm Brimley. Just saying. So I'm curious what the story of this is. I like the story they did with Barbie, but I have no idea how they turn Monopoly into something like that. Tyler. Uh, I'm medium on this. I'd like to see what they do, but I like the idea of, Let's just make movies out of board games now and have a whole cinematic universe. Yeah. I want to see where they go next. Hey, better than the Puniverse. That's your very first I don't edition. Know about that. That's what she said. <laughs> ah, Pittsburgh. Ah. <laughs> Somebody's at the door. I put it, that's what she said in there, too. Y'all can't hear it. All right. That's your very first edition of Blazing Hot Off the Press Headlines and your last edition of Blazing <laughs> Hot Off the Press Headlines. Mild, medium, or in fuego? How do we Ooh, feel about things? Pittsburgh. We'll tell you. John, you, I'm going to unplug that thing. <laughs> Let's, do we have the camera on the door? Uh, Let's, no, okay. Someone's at the Hold door. On. Who could Hold it be? On. Who's at the door? Do, 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 do. Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a surprise. I'm going to go get that door. We guys. had no idea. Please get the door. And Everybody. Yeah, we're going to make this happen. I keep forgetting the light box. I'm going to do that. Hey! hey. It's the president himself. We're going to see a movie about the presidency. In a couple of hours. Reed, I'm so happy you're here. Well, thank you for having me. I, I have a grievance, and I think you can help solve it. Okay. It's the jackasses in this office. <laughs> and I was wondering if you could Wait, just... You're going to have to be... Okay, let me be Way more specific. More specific. <laughs> Which one? Lunsford, Rockstar, and Tyler have all been, you know... I have, a, I have a problem with something that's said here in the office, okay? Ryan Brown does an impression of a notable comic book character that's not accurate oh, in any capacity. Pittsburgh. Oh, I, I could hear it in my office. <laughs> and <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know what was going on. I have expressed my grievance, and it continues to pop up, and now Lunsford is making a mockery of my grievance, and I'd like for you to discipline him on the air right now as we speak. <laughs> Can you make that happen? Um, Can you strip him of his... Duties and have him and Tyler swap roles, which I think Tyler would be okay with, right? He can be permanent yeah, change here. See, he Tyler's can be in on the it. assistant to the operations manager. Yes, that could happen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I see you're taking no action. Great. Yeah. We're here. Hey, well, the good news is the entire time I was trying to get get something done, all I heard was, "Oh, Pittsburgh, <laughs> oh Pittsburgh." We brought there you go. We brought Reed in to talk today about great leadership, and he is showing none of it. Uh, <laughs> but we'll give him an opportunity to redeem him, redeem himself. Let's talk about the leader of the Alabama basketball team, Nate Oates. He seems to be a very committed individual to the Crimson Tide and their future success. Obviously, the Kentucky job came open, and Nate Oates released a statement on social media saying, Bama Nation, I am fully committed to this team and to the university. We've already accomplished some great things here, and there is nothing I want more 
than for the University of Alabama to win its first national championship in men's basketball. Despite any rumors, to the contrary, rest assured that I will continue that pursuit as your head coach, Roll Tide. This came out a few days ago, obviously, when speculation was at its highest. But as a Bama basketball fan yourself, what did it mean to you to see that messaging and put those rumors to rest? First, I think everybody um, that's close to him thought he was going to stay. Um, I think he's already accomplished. I mean, obviously, the Final Four is the first time in school history. But I think he is already, in five seasons, the best Alabama basketball coach that's ever ever been there. Um, so, you know, uh, you know, everybody's worried about the stadium. I don't think that with him – is as big as getting the NIL stuff, you know, the collective going, getting more money that way where he can get players in. And then it sounds like, you know, the big thing for them was the uh, practice facility. And I think they're trying to make some improvements and made a, you know, uh, Greg Burnham made, made a statement and it kind of seemed like, you know, we're going to work on a couple things and the, the practice facility is one of the big things for him. We talk about entertainment, things that entertain us here. We have our fandoms we share with the audience. How entertaining do you feel the style of basketball that Alabama's playing right now is? Obviously, it's been successful, but as a fan, how entertaining is it to watch just as a fan of basketball itself? It was slightly different than Anthony Grant. <laughs> just a little bit. Uh, it was, you know, seriously, I mean, it was like, hey, can we get to 60? Now there's, you know, halves where they've scored 60. Um, it's a fun brand of basketball. And, you know, my thing is, why aren't more teams doing it? I mean, the guy's been super successful. Um, I just don't know, you know, since he's been the SEC, I think he's got the most amount of wins in five years. Uh, obviously, he's won SEC, ti- uh, you know, regular season titles, postseason titles. Um, so, you know, to answer it, it's a lot of fun to watch. And when they're hitting their shots from the outside, it looks pretty easy. When they're hitting their shots from outside, because yes. against UConn towards the end, they start getting super cold, and it's like, this is when it sucks. This is when they're missing all their threes. No doubt. And then, you know, if they're not hitting threes, he wants them, you know, in the paint and shooting from the free throw line. The problem with UConn is kicking it around. Big. The, yeah. yeah, kicking it around the guy with 7 2. Um, but, you know, I think they played, I mean, they played UConn as well as anybody else did in the tournament. Um, I know UConn got beat a couple times in the regular season, but, I mean, that team was. I mean, you know, some people are saying it might be one of the best teams of all time. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if I'd go that far, but they were damn good. John, we've talked about the on the court product, but off the court, Nate Oates, just the way he carries himself, the way he gets right to the point when he's talking. You like his leadership style or are you a fan of it? I do. Um, you know, there was one leadership style that worked for everybody, and that was Nick Saban's leadership style. And that's it didn't matter what the sport was, it's like be more like Nick Saban. If you're not winning, be more like Nick Saban. And now Saban's gone, and so I think now he's more – I mean, we'll see what happens with DeBoer, but we'll, I think now it's like I can focus more on what Nate Oates does, and I see Nate Oates is being successful with it. So now it's like, okay, now everybody follow what Nate Oates is doing, the kind of leader he's being, and seeing him, um, you know, away from the court, like when he comes on the next round and stuff like that, and then seeing what he's like on the court. I mean, sometimes you got to be the coach that goes out there and gets technical, and he's willing to go do that. You know, you got to be able to be firing up and everything, and that's something that – I loved Anthony Grant, the person, but yep. as a coach, he wasn't going to be that guy to get super fired up and go get technicals all the time. He wasn't going to be that guy that could, you know, really build the team to be what it needed to be. Um, you know, Avery Johnson came in as a little more fiery, and 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 then and Nate Oates has taken it to another level as well. And everything about Nate Oates so far seems really good on and off the court. Got another sports question for you here, Reed. If sixteen million dollars went missing from your bank account, would you notice it? Ooh. Sixteen dollars goes missing on purpose. <laughs> no, um, that story is crazy. And you know, when it first came out, you know, I'm a Dodgers fan, obviously, so I was hoping it wouldn't be Otani and the guys covering up for him or whatever. But with what was released today, it, it seems like that guy was just a bad, bad guy, and he's the one that did it. And the interpreter, have, yes, correct. Um, and it seems like they've got evidence that that he was talking to the bank, impersonating Shohei. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how he messed on that money now. I mean, how many millions and millions of dollars, because not even his baseball salary, all his endorsements and all that stuff. But, you know, we hear these stories all the time about pro athletes that get, you know, family members, um, handlers, whoever, are stealing these guys blind. I think Trent Richardson 
said off his first NFL contract, he, you know, when he started digging in, he had family and friends that had gotten to like $3 million that was unaccounted for. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's sad. We live in a world where people take advantage of others. Um, but it looks like that guy took complete advantage of his situation. It is a situation, John, where there's maybe not going to be as much empathy from these millions and millions of dollars being stolen because you have a giant contract that has just been landed yes. by Otani. And it's kind of tough, I think, for blue-collar America <laughs> to relate to, oh, $16 million went missing and I've just now found, found out. Maybe not the most relatable thing no, in I'd, the history of sports. I'd be very protective of, like Reed said, $16 in my account. You, I, I want to make sure everything's counted for. you got to feel bad for him. He only makes $2 million this year on his baseball contract. I know, and the whole thing like deferred or whatever. It's yeah. $68 million deferred yeah. from this, this year's just contract. Just this year, yeah. yeah so. Dodgers are playing the long game. <laughs> Wait, yeah, that ownership's yes. waiting for somebody else to take the ownership away from them right. down the road and have those responsibilities. Exactly what's <laughs> happening here. Well, I want to get into Luntz's list here, which is going to talk all about leadership, which is why we have brought in a fearless leader here at the office, and that is Reed Taylor, who will do nothing about my complaints <laughs> of these three really getting on my nerves. Oh, bitcher. And no one heard you. You have no microphone. Don't do it again. If you hit that button, I will chop your finger off. <laughs> Let's get into this. <laughs> this is going to potentially be the most, the toughest Luntz's list to talk about, but we're going to try. Tonight, we all get a chance to see the new film from Alex Garland, Civil War. The movie features a divided America as a rapidly escalating multi-party civil war engulfs all of the United States, which has become a dystopian dictatorship under its president. For this fictional exercise, if John could fill five very different types of jobs... Picking Americans to join his faction, who would he enlist? Let's get ready to discuss John's personal picks on another brand new edition of Luntz's List. John, with the film Civil War coming to theaters this weekend, I want you to name the five real-life American public individuals that you would pick that are not in politics, the military, or the government currently, or ever, that you'd want fighting on your side of this fictional civil war. OJ Simpson is now off the board. Number five, we're not going to go, we're going to do this one step at a time. Number yeah. five has to be a great non political speaker that could rally your troops and make public appearances as a trusted voice of the war effort. So I feel like with this list, I could have gone a lot of different ways. I pretty much had to go celebrity with all of them because there's a lot of media to what these people are doing. So I couldn't have been like around the office, you know, Oh, I think, you know, Jim would have been great at, you know, doing X or whatever. Um, not that I would have put him on what the list. Would Jim have been good at, at, during a I was trying to pick war. somebody not in this room tonight. I came by. I feel bad. But. Hey, I got it. Landmine expert. How about that? <laughs> yes. Um, if I wanted to lose the war, I would put him on my side, but, um, no, actual landmines, like oh, he's in charge. Okay. No, but then I was just adding to- on top of Sorry. that. Cause he loses. So, um, I just try to think, you know, I don't know. I, I I don't. There's a lot of people that I didn't pick because obviously I can only pick one per category you and all of five this. people here. Um, so I'm just going to get into it. So number five has to be a good non-political speaker that has to have a good visual presence that I think people would ultimately get behind this person. This is the face of your war effort. And there's a lot of really good motivational speakers out there and all that kind of stuff. But I thought, who's somebody that whenever they pop up, it's like. I can dig it. Larry the Cable Guy. Not Larry I was going to go guy. Richard Simmons. Not Larry the Cable Guy. Probably closer to Richard Simmons. If this has anything to do with Fast okay. and Furious. It does not have anything to do with Fast and Furious. Okay, so looking for a great speaker that is not politically divisive. That, I don't know, who knows? Maybe John picked somebody who's politically divisive. I don't know. But there's a lot of options here on the board. And I want you guys to be as highly critical as you need to be of whatever he comes up with. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Dolly Parton. Can you imagine? Hey, y'all, we got to get this together. 
Sorry, that's bad. Now, let's say, I, let's see, I took this from a USO approach kind of thing. Like, they do those shows to get the troops, you know, all happy Aroused. and everything. And, and if you're True. making a, a public appearance. Is she like, wearing the Cowboys yeah. cheerleader outfit while she's talking to people? Possible. Very possible. Racing herself, trying to walk. Um, <laughs> Dolly Parton is somebody who has, I feel like, a lot of America on her side. Um, you know, she has taken political stances before, so politically it could potentially be, be divisive, but she's from the South. Um, so if my faction is ultimately here in Alabama, then, you know, I feel like she's somebody from the South. Um, you know, you could go with somebody like a Tony Robbins was really the first person that popped to my mind of like just a good motivational speaker, but like Tony Robbins isn't my favorite person out there. I could have, you know, picked more of a TikTok motivational person like Gary Vee or somebody, but I thought, no, I'm going to go with somebody that every time they pop on the screen, young and old alike can still respect and that I think she could do a good job of ultimately rallying the troops and being a good public figure for the war effort. Reed, would a Dolly Parton appearance motivate you to fight on behalf of your faction within the upcoming Civil War, fictional Civil War? Zero chance. Non, doesn't do it for you. Doesn't do it for me. You know, it's funny. I thought of Gary Vee, but I was like, how many F-bombs would he have? A lot. I mean, that guy can't, yeah. can't talk without that. What about? I think Tony Robbins would, too, if it came about, to war. Hey, y'all want to hear, hear me out? Portnoy. Portnoy? Um, that's a that's a Dunaway reference. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's funny. He would yeah. get he'd get he's a, entertaining. He'd get a group. But he rubs of, a lot of people the wrong way too. So you think he's on the opposition side already? And like, <laughs> probably, probably part of the problem. Like, I, I feel like he rubs more, way more people the wrong way versus somebody like Dolly Parton, who doesn't necessarily rub a lot of people the wrong way. Uh, that's saying, when you hit the "That's what she said" button. That's what she there said. We go. Uh. Her campaign slogan will be part in our progress. Sure. <laughs> Rocky, you got to okay. be a campaign manager. <laughs> I'm trying to, man. How would you grade the pick, Rockstar? That's, it's out I, there. You can give zeros. I know. That's just, I'm not giving okay. a zero. I would say I'm uh, medium, medium to mild. <laughs> okay. So we got a zero and a medium mild. Yeah. <laughs> so far, this grading scale is interesting. So far. Uh-oh. Go. <laughs> Come on, Tyler. What you, what you got? I'm just confused, but I don't think I understood the assignment. Well, I'm going to give five different roles that he has to fill. I mean, I explained okay, his role, so, right? I mean, yeah. It, you know, this one has to be a great non-political speaker that could rally the troops and make public appearances as a trusted voice of the war effort. What does USO exist for? To rally the troops. Yeah. What Steve and Rogers was supposed to be before he actually had to become yes. a super I, yes. I really thought he was going to go Saban. I don't know why. <laughs> We'll like Nick Saban. You got four other spots to fill. Well, he's yeah. going to do the Secretary of Agriculture. See, he's going to go to politics, so I can't use him anymore. Number oh, four, number four has to be someone that could consistently win in hand to hand one v one combat. This was obvious where I had to go Ooh. to find this person, but I mean, you know, I chose this person. Why okay, not? we're going to number four. This is someone that has to consistently win in hand to hand one v one combat. This has to be a real life American who fills this role. It can't be like. The Hulk or something. I guess it could uh, be This Hulk is an Hogan. interesting pick if you uh, know his uh, out-of-the-ring yeah. behavior. <laughs> well, Jim let me tell you this. So John Jones oh. is arguably the rough. best UFC fighter of all time. Um, now he He's has, his own worst enemy. He has disappeared a little bit lately because he loves to do some performance-enhancing drugs, which in war are legal. And <laughs> he loves uh, to get disqualified in matches, which in war is legal. So... Everything he does that gets him in trouble with UFC and war, there's no rules. If I need somebody to win a fight for me, 1v1, hand-to-hand combat, why would I not go with the single best UFC fighter ever and who also is a heavyweight so he can hold his own? It's not like getting, you know, Conor McGregor's on American, but somebody like him is too small for, you know, like a heavyweight. Could have picked Jake Chillenhall after Roadhouse. I, God. I, I real swear Adesanya. I was thinking the same thing. Because of how What's bad that trailer looks. I mean, you know what I talked about. Because <laughs> of how bad it is. For, for Roadhouse? <laughs> the new one. You yeah. haven't watched it yet? No, I haven't watched it yet. I just like, it's, there's like a split second. It's like, we're unified, but it looks so bad, and we're not unified anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, not that bad. I thought he was going to put Dalton up there from the original Roadhouse. <laughs> I thought you meant Andy yeah. Dalton for a second, and I was like, oh, Was I that Patrick Quizzy? Yeah. Well, he's dead, so I can't do yeah. that. Don't yeah. think that would work. So. Um, but no, John Jones, Details. I think, is the number one. Uh, See, UFC read what guy. I told you about. He's an absolute jerk, and you should uh, punish him here in the studio. Go ahead. It was someone that could consistently win in hand to hand combat one v one. Why would I not go with the best MMA guy there, who's That's also not, from America? Not a bad choice. Not a bad choice. Would you take who also wait, fights dirty? You, it's you take war. John Jones over Brock Lesnar. You, you've, you've won me over, John. I thought about Brock Lesnar too, but I would pick John Jones over Brock Lesnar ultimately. 
I don't need, I mean, John Jones has gotten in plenty of trouble too. Oh, but sure. Brock Lesnar is kind of untouchable right now. If I'm going the Dolly Parton route of, hey, hey, y'all, this is all fun and, you know, we need yeah. to get together, Brock Lesnar ain't the person to go with right now. All right. Number three has to be an individual that you trust to shoot, edit, publish, write your propaganda videos that are going to go out and affect <clears throat> the masses emotionally. Who would you be picking for number three in this category? That's what we're going to find out soon here on Lunce's List. <laughs> Same in the chat. Dolly Parton, John Jones duo is deadly. <laughs> <laughs> um, They're both knockouts. Yeah. This is one that I feel uh, like. Uh, okay, I'm moving on. So when you said shoot, I thought it was something else. Number three. No, this has to be someone who can shoot, edit, and publish propaganda videos. We're a nonviolent channel here in talking about the Civil War. Anderson Forster count, Cooper. Forster count for this? Forster would be eligible for this. He's got, he's got softball. <laughs> Number uh, three. Oh, my gosh. Did not see that coming. That is a that's a swing. So I need somebody with wartime experience, which he has. Um, I need somebody Show the who, board. Have you shown the board? Do people know what the pick is? Anderson oh Cooper. Gosh. So... I asked Rocky who's bigger between Wolf Blitzer and Anderson Cooper in his mind. He said Wolf Blitzer, and I probably would agree. That's wrong. I would yeah. agree strictly from if he's on camera, who are you willing to listen to more? I feel like it's Wolf Blitzer. But Anderson Cooper can do the entire. Anderson Cooper is a 60-minute correspondent. I mean, it's not even close. He's, he's the a, he's a Van, Eve guy. He's now. a Vanderbilt, but also uh, Wolf Blitzer is the only, guy that, he's the only guy that I see that does breaking news. Every half hour is breaking news. Just on camera. I think more people would, Jim would, would vote yep. Wolf Blitzer of if you had to watch one of the two on camera. But I feel like Anderson Cooper can do it all from get to shoot, edit, publish everything. And he has war experience. And I actually actually got to know him first on, as host of The Mole on ABC back in the day, which was a good show. Hey, good call out for that one. That was um, an underrated show. It was show. a very underrated show. I wish show. they'd bring The Mole back. But they did on so uh, they did, Netflix. They did on Netflix. Gosh, I missed it. It's, yeah. not, it's not the same, though. <laughs> oh, okay. um, but anyway, I trust him not only to report on it, but also handle the full gambit of being great on camera and behind the camera as well. But you would take Anderson Cooper over Steven Spielberg? In front of the camera, yes. It's both. Give me both. I'll take Steven Spielberg in front of the camera and producing and writing and all that. I don't know. I, but, I, but Steven Spielberg in a war zone? Yeah, you've got Dolly Parton in a war zone, Josh. She's not, I didn't sit around the war zone. She's, she's back, at rallying the, she's back troops, on stage yeah. rallying the troops. Oh, my gosh. John Jones is lifting Buicks. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. And Anderson Cooper said, is the, uh, actually met Charlie Chaplin. How crazy is that to know a guy that met Charlie Chaplin? Sorry, he's a, he's a Vanderbilt. Also, yeah. by the way, Dolly Parton and Anderson Cooper have a lot of money to contribute to the calls. Okay. So, because like Rocky said, he's a Vanderbilt. What does this job pay? No, actually, you pay us. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it works. No, hey, if we're at a war, I need, you know, we need some resources. Got it. All I'm going to be thinking tonight is if, for some reason, they toss to like an Anderson Cooper, <laughs> CNN, fake headline sort of thing during the movie Civil War, I'm going to die laughing, and people in the audience are going to be like, why is that so funny? Throw a quarter at him. Now, speaking of Wolf Blitzer, I thought the Mission Impossible thing they did with him was actually pretty good, too. Wolf so. Blitzer was in the movie Skyfall. That's how James Bond knew that bad things were happening back at yep. MI6. Because he was sitting at the bar. Some Wolf Blitzer pops on. Off place. Yeah, this place doesn't have Breaking probably, news. This place doesn't have running water, but they got CNN up on the screen. Yeah, <laughs> come on now. Anyway, number two. Um, okay. Number two has to be able to feed your battalions while keeping morale high. So both of those make it one choice. Do y'all have like a favorite Wolfgang celebrity Pop. chef? Uh, celebrity chef? Guy Fieri. It's Fieri, but yes. Me and Tyler with names are going to, it's going to be a fun thing. Is it Guy Fieri? No, I, don't, I know how to pronounce it. I'm saying, is that the choice for number two? That is the choice. This guy ruined my Tunica the Club Sandwich. The mayor of Flavortown. I had this favorite club sandwich in Tunica, Mississippi. And then Flavortown moved in. My club sandwich. And I blame Guy Fieri. So, there's plenty of great chefs. Yes. Reed said Wolfgang Pugger. And we actually, first thing that came to mind of like, who's a great chef who, I like him when he's on TV. Um, but if you're keeping morale high, you got to have the mayor of Flavortown at that point. You gotta have the guy who's so happy go lucky and everything, while also being able to at least provide the basics. He's not the world's greatest chef, but he's the basic he can provide the basics. He's got a gigantic grocery store in Ohio if we can ever make our way up there in Flavortown and use the food there. But uh no. Guy is definitely the choice here. 
Anybody going to argue any of this other than the food that's produced will probably give. I mean, he can just going to be like indigestion beer battered to your onion Italian rings and Italians. stuff like that. He can just make you basics. You're not having to have a five star meal here. We have the heaviest battalion in all of the world, thanks to Guy Fieri and him using his talents to keep morale high. Yeah. Reed, you're deathly silent on this. I don't know where to go with this one. Okay. <laughs> If anybody offers a better option, I'll, I'll take it, but I don't hear any better options. That was the one I suggested. Okay. This is the number one spot and is the most important assignment of this entire task, the fictional civil war. Number one is the person you are putting in charge and making your five-star general to lead the entire war effort in all aspects of it. Can't be yourself, so I hope you're they not. They have to be alive, right? They have to be alive. They have to be American. Most great leaders are political. Yes. So you have to go. Wait, oh, you said great leaders? Huh? Sorry. No, go ahead and continue. Okay. Most leaders are political. A lot of the great ones have been political okay. as well. Um, so instead, I thought, hey, who's going to ultimately help me with the best decisions, both uh, across the board, financially, um, with our technology that we have, with the personnel that we have, everything that we have, easy choice. I don't even know what to say. He says it's an easy choice. I can't read it. Tim Tim Cook. Cook. Tim Cook. From the state of Alabama, so he's local. Auburn grad. Taylor Korn would love this choice. Auburn grad, unfortunately, but won't hold that against him because he's from the state of Alabama, so if I'm needing somebody here that I can get behind me because the alliance starts here in Alabama, I mean, why not go with the person that has led the most profitable business in America? Tim Cook, behind Apple, we can use all of Apple's technology to help us win the war because the next war that comes will be a cyber war. Therefore, Tim Cook is the best person to have leading our troops and leading the people there. He's smart. He has the tech. He's got the money. And Apple can fund our whole war effort. Not a bad choice. Tyler, any problems with this one? Uh, I got got no beef with this one. That makes sense with... uh all the criteria Tim listed. I mean, you guys already treat Android users like they're the scum of the earth anyway, so <laughs> yeah. might as well right. go ahead and continue that trend here with number one. Great. Whoever said Elon, he's not an American. I so. mean, I'll probably have to lead the, leave the country if you do that, but it's okay, John. Okay. Well, if you just buy an iPhone, and you're safe. You take a picture of that list, you send oh, it out on social oh, yeah. media right no now. No one would be able to guess the top. <laughs> Lee, let's see what responses you get. What is Lentz's list today for? There's no way so anyone the chatter saying too. There's no way <laughs> anybody would guess what topic that is. Occasionally well, Dunaway likes to come in and try to guess the topic. He can't do it. He's hey, always way my wrong. next question is your categories there, where would you put people in this office? Ooh. Oh gosh. Well, okay. I'm, so I'm break some hearts here. Um so number one, my uh, five star general would be retailer. <laughs> Oh my god! Number two has to be able to hire. You have done a fabulous job all day long. I don't care. (laughs) Number two has to feed my battalions while keeping morale high. I would have put myself in this role, but I will put Ryan Brown in this role. It's gonna be Tyler. Tyler makes food runs all the time. Hey, us! Shout out the pictures. Where are you gonna produce the 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 food from, Tyler? Are you a master chef? (laughs) Yeah. To be fair, you said make the food. Now I was a line cook, but. John would probably be better at cooking. You can be Brown's assistant. I mean, that it yeah, that would there work too. I'll be the sous chef. Um, Just number don't three, sit in his chair. Number three, Scott, obviously, with yeah. the ed- able to shoot, edit, publish propaganda videos. Uh, number four, the one that can cons- consistently win hand to hand combat. I guess I got to go Lance on that one. Um, he's a biter. He's a biter. I, he, I, cause, I cause I, half court basketball. Man. My whole thing about John Jones is that he fights dirty and in war there's no rules. So Lance would clearly fight dirty and there have been no rules. Um, and then number five, the great non political speaker that could rally the troops and make public appearances as a trusted voice of the war effort. Well, it really comes down to two people. And their names sound familiar, but I'll go with Tim. It's got to be Rockstar over Jim. Well, I would vote with Tim over Jim? I would vote with Rockstar. Rockstar can play See, the See, I might have gone little T there. I think she could fire you up. Like when she gets passionate, she probably got a lot better than Jim could. Uh, Jim would not have the rallying the troops person, but could be the trusted voice of the war effort potentially. Yeah. You ready for Little T's motivational speech, guys? Tim Cook went to Auburn. <laughs> we are in good hands. <laughs> what about this one? Here's Dunaways. This side of the room, roll tight. 
this side of the room. <laughs> Roll time. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pittsburgh, ready to rally. <laughs> Great time to end the show. Oh, Pittsburgh. We've got those five that are on the list. Did we, did, Lunsford, I, I haven't seen the chat. Did you see anybody in the chat that threw out a name where you're like, oh, that was actually a pretty um, good pick? Anything that sort of would have been flirted with on Lunsford's list had you heard about it first? Someone said Mark Cuban for number one. Not a terrible choice. See, I thought about Cuban. Um, I see Joe Rogan and Mr. Beast for number three. Somebody said for number three, the it says an individual you trust to shoot at a publish. Somebody, somebody just said disrupt media, so I guess that includes all of us. Um, Greg Sankey would be my propaganda guy. He's great at it. Uh, Mr. Beast, yeah. Joe Rogan is the propaganda guy. Um, yeah, those are the only ones I really see. Deontay yeah. Walter is the fighter, but I think he'd go down if it came to a real actual fight. I got a question for y'all. Did y'all see um, – you know, Sage Steele, you saw ESPN. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you see when she, she called was... Dana White Joe Rogan? Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> sad. How, how uncomfortable was that? Was that a so live bad. interview? Because I feel like that should have been edited out. It almost seems like it was after they had been interviewing yeah. each other. So, like, after the fact, she, like, comes and sits down and is like, so, being Joe Rogan, and it's like, just a total. Now, to be fair, if you just took a really quick look at him, they do look yeah, very similar. Yeah, yeah. But okay. it was just, I think it's just a total brain fart on her side, but it looks so bad. It does. <laughs> and Dana so, White. He was pissed. He was so pissed. He, I thought he said he was done doing podcasts when he was on Howie Mandel's and he stormed out. I was told that was a PR yeah. stunt. I guess it was. Yeah, it right? was. He'll right, never be geez. done. Well, Dana White, you're invited here I, on the Meltdown. Anytime. I wouldn't like for y'all to have Dunaway in here soon. Is that and because he told you to say that or he actually? <laughs> no, 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 no. And I want y'all to, to mess up and call him the wrong name. What should we call him? Should we call him Dana White? <laughs> I don't think that would work. Hey, we appreciate I'm going to be nice. We appreciate uh, Jack Royer being here with us today. Yeah. Uh, you were great on CBS 42. So, Art, tell us about uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Before we get into any more trouble, we've already started the American Civil War. Sorry about that, the second one. Uh, we mm. will go ahead and sign off now. But, hey, John, I can't make any bets on whether or not the show will be on the air again tomorrow. But I can make a bet at our title sponsor, and that's my bookie. Yes, you can. Go to mybookie.ag. Use promo code next round. Get that first deposit bonus. Playoffs are about to start for hockey and basketball. Major League Baseball season underway. You can still bet a lot of things, even though around here college basketball is over. And so we're already looking forward to football season. You can go ahead and play futures on football season as well. Got a lot of those. Hopefully they hit like my Michigan pick did last year, where I made bank thanks to my bookie. So go to mybookie.ag. Use promo code next round. Pretty soon you'll have an interpreter that steals all of it. That's the way this works. You Probably make so. bank, and you lose it to the damn interpreter. Reed, thank you for stopping by. I I'm, appreciate it, guys. Fun I, as always. I, I, fun as always also probably means why am I on here? Why am I here? I have more important <laughs> things to be doing. That's what I hear no, I, from I, the I'm, I'm, I share a wall with you guys, so we're good. So you hear the show every day I mean, whether you we want do, to or not. We could put a little window over there. Yeah, that would work. We just wave. Just, yeah. yeah. Do a like, read hey wave guys. every day. That'd be good. Oh, Rockstar's got a credit card. <laughs> Rockstar? <laughs> ah. Is that really EG's credit card that you have? <laughs> oh, my gosh. She she's not the best at keeping up with things, but let's not show her credit card information. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah. I was about don't to do cut. that, John. Well, I just saw get the, the three the three digit code on the back real quick if you can. <laughs> oh my gosh, we need to let her know that you found it. Okay, we are showing it now. Great. No, it's just the side of the. Oh, card. she's probably already canceled it. I guarantee you. Oh my gosh, I we're gonna have to have some some talks with EG about making sure her valuables are secured. Hey, Rockstar is headed to the movies tonight for the first time in a long time. This is your first time going to a prime theater experience. Are you excited about it? Has it been I, built well, the up way you talk, like Tim's texting me, like it's like life changing, life altering. It's, uh, the, it's the best theater experience you can have. Okay, well, I'm, it's I'm the best for, of the options. I don't know if I'd say it's life altering. This is the first film I've been to. In Wait, a where year. is this one? Bestavia. Bestavia. Oh, Bestavia. Yeah. <laughs> Auditorium so, one. Really far from your house. Yeah, well, I want to yeah. walk over there and uh, see a film. And uh, Tyler and I have a little bit of a date night. So he's already talking about his churros. Y'all, y'all so. are the new Dunaway and Brown. Yeah. We need a rickshaw. <laughs> hey, you guys will also have an out of the theater reaction video. It's going to be a pairing of Rockstar oh, and yeah. Tyler. Do you he, want to do a morning, like wake up early in the morning and try to do it too? Like just to have like, what we're not talking think? about pillow talk. Oh, that's what I'm saying. Like just to kind of make it. Reed, do you like the out of the theater reaction videos from Tyler? Cause I feel like he thinks we're mocking him. But I am, actually I am not joking. Tyler does a great job with those. I mean, he really does. I love it. And I hope that you continue yes. the trend. I look forward to seeing what y'all come up with tonight. And Hey, and I've only heard compliments, and that is hard to get around here. <laughs> he's, he's convinced we're, prun- we're, we're pranking him I still think right there's now. an inside joke going there on. There is no inside joke, I promise <laughs> no. you. I swear to you. 
I think I said it to y'all one day when it right after the first oh, one. Oh, it's been yeah. rave reviews yeah. across the board. We'll have random people come into the studio like, oh, Tyler, your video reviews. And yeah. Tyler's always like, quit being so mean. And it's like, I, I did not say that. Well, that's come on. the vibe you're giving. That's the vibe you're getting. Anyway, that's going to do it for us here on the Meltdown. Thank you for making us a part of your day. Go visit Culver's. They've got some lovely butter burgers that you can enjoy before heading to the Cineplex as we're all going to check Civil War out tonight. We'll have a full spoiler review uploaded tomorrow. We'll obviously have a non-spoiler review on the channel live, 2 o'clock Central, 3 o'clock Eastern, right here on the Meltdown. Oh, Pittsburgh.